I'm taking the opportunity provided by this first Sunday after Diana's farewell to share some differing but connected issues that affect us as a Christian community. I do apologise to any visitors today that much of this might not be of much interest to you. I'm talking first about the process for appointing a new dean and then looking at the challenges and priorities that face us as a cathedral community. Our dean is appointed by the king. An agreement at national level between church and state provides the process for the appointment. And if you don't like it, there's nothing much we can do about it. The Archbishop of Canterbury and the Prime Minister are involved through their appointment secretaries and three documents need to be prepared, one by the bishop, one by the appointment secretaries, and one by the cathedral chapter, which if you don't know, is the governing body of the cathedral, and the membership is more lay than ordained, and I can see Anne sitting here today, I'm here, Chris is here, uh, and is Barry here, I can't see, but anyway, that we're around, and Matt, who is the chapter clerk, is sitting in the front. And it is in preparing that document from the chapter that we would value your input. The chapter is holding a number of extra meetings, but on October the 10th, we will be preparing the first draft of our statement, which will include what qualities we'd like to see in a new dean at this particular time in the cathedral's history. And we'd very much like to hear from members of the cathedral community. And that can be done by emailing Matt, and you'll find all the details in the notices at the back of this uh, service sheet. We will process our statement as quickly as we can. And once it's been submitted, the appointment secretaries will come down to Guildford and meet people and produce their own document. An interview panel will be drawn up. The independent chair is nominated by the bishop. Amongst others, it will include a dean from another cathedral, someone nominated by the College of Canons of this cathedral who's not on the cathedral staff or on the chapter, and a lay member of the cathedral chapter. The post will be advertised, a shortlist will be drawn up, and interviews will be held. When the panel chooses a candidate, their name has to go to the King. When the King has approved the candidate, it can be announced, and the candidate normally has to give three months' notice. So to answer someone's question, it is extremely unlikely that we'll have a new Dean before Christmas. Please would you pray for all those involved in this process. For me, it's quite exciting that we'll be working together for some time. And can I say how moved I've been by the kind words and offers of support I've been receiving. My excellent clergy colleagues, our committed, hard-working lay staff and musicians and lovely congregation, let alone our very committed volunteers. All of you, I thank both for what you've said to me personally and for the commitment to the hard work that lies ahead of us in preparing for a new dean. Hard work for a lay staff team that's been cut to the bone and a smaller congregation with all sorts of commitments in life. And what is that work? We have a long list of things to tidy up, from the sound system to the website. But I've suggested four priorities to my clergy colleagues and to chapter, and they're in no particular order, as they say on Strictly Come Dancing. The uh, four things are the pastoral care of each other. Actually, I lie. That's actually the top commitment. The pastoral care of each other. Communication, the land sale, and our finances. The ups and downs of the last few years, including all that happened in COVID, have, I think, taken a toll on all of us, congregation, staff, clergy alike. And we need to care for each other whenever we can. We need to understand one another's fragility and one another's strengths and imagine walking in their shoes, which is easier said than done. 
And there's no wonderful program that can enable this to happen, simply the loving and valuing and caring of and for everyone. We are intending to reinstate a team of day chaplains to be around in the cathedral offering care, but even that will take a while. Communication is challenging in any organisation, but notoriously so in the church, with its mixture of clergy, staff and volunteers. Nevertheless, our record in communication here is pretty bad. And I am someone who deeply believes in being as transparent and open as possible, except when something, of course, is confidential. And this address is meant to be a first step in sharing information but we will get it wrong. And also, please ask if you want to know something. We'll either tell you the answer, or that we don't know, or that we can't tell you because it's confidential. The land sale. This is an area where we have received quite a lot of criticism for not sharing information. I think that criticism is rather unfair. On Wednesday of last week, a formal appeal was lodged against the decision of Guildford Borough Council Planning Committee to turn down planning permission at their meeting in March. As many of you know, we are working with Vivid, a leading provider of affordable housing, not a profit-making developer. In our contract with them, it provides that if a decision is taken to go to appeal, Vivid foot the bill, and that is a sizeable amount, possibly a quarter of a million pounds. When the decision to appeal was taken, Vivid, who was so good to work with, asked that we keep the decision confidential until they had prepared the necessary evidence and paperwork, and that the appeal was lodged on Wednesday. It is now in the public domain. There will be a public inquiry. Who knows when? We might have a sweepstake on whether there's a new dean before or afterwards. The optimists have suggested February or March, and after that we'll have to wait for a decision. And that decision is crucial for us financially. If planning permission is granted, it will mean that our reserves will receive some much-needed funds as we can recoup money we've spent on fees and surveys and the like, and also that a significant endowment will be established to provide funds for the routine maintenance and upkeep of the cathedral, which in turn will mean that our annual budget will not be in deficit. Quite frankly, we are on a knife edge financially. Just before COVID, we had produced a break-even budget but COVID helped to deplete our reserves and lower our income, which was alleviated by the filming that took place, thanks to our events team. Now, there are a number of streams that fund any cathedral, including this one. The church commissioners give us a modest grant and the stipends of two residential canons and the dean. There is a tiny amount of interest from various endowment and restricted funds. There is a significant amount of money raised by our enterprise and events team and also by our development team. There are legacies grants, including those kind ones from the Friends, donations, and there is congregational giving. On November the 19th, we will be thinking about renewal of giving where all of us are asked to work out what proportion of our income is right to give to the church. And as this should be a regular activity, we will be doing so every year. It's what we used to do. Hopefully that will increase what is often sacrificially being given now. No cathedral congregation in this land can ever completely support the total costs of a cathedral, but can provide a vital part of the income stream. We were hoping to have more filming this year, but a number of factors over which we have no control, like the actors and writers' strike in the USA, meant that it did not happen. And as a result, if you add in inflation as well, 
we are facing a deficit this year of £100,000, which is not sustainable into the future. We cannot really wait for the planning decision before addressing this deficit, so if there's any help you can offer in this area, it will be most gratefully received. As I said earlier, we are very blessed with so many good and supportive and hard-working people in our cathedral community that I believe we can find a way forward. I do commend all this to your prayers. I thank you for listening and look forward to working together in the months ahead. If I can answer any questions, I'll be at the back of the cathedral after the service and then I shall come over to coffee in seasons.